Hi, I'm Nima Romani, and today I'm gonna to be answering your questions about the Roe v. Wade reversal. This is the most important legal decision of our lifetime because it's the first time the Supreme Court has taken away a constitutional right as opposed to expanding the rights. And in the Dobbs v. Jackson case, the justices ruled that the state of Mississippi could ban abortions as early as zero weeks or the date of conception. This was big because previously abortion was a constitutional right in every state. That means states couldn't restrict access to abortion. Now there was a question of, could women have abortion up to 20 weeks, 15 weeks, or some other time? But it was never permitted for abortion to be banned outright. So what does this mean for women across the United States? Let's get to your questions. We actually got here during the Obama administration when Supreme Court justices died and President Obama was unable to replace them with liberal justices, specifically because Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans were able to prevent a liberal justice from being appointed. And that liberal justice turned out to be none other than Merrick Garland, who is currently the Attorney General of the United States, but is not a sitting Supreme Court Justice. Then when Trump was elected, he was able to nominate and confirm three conservative justices, but not just three justices, three justices that had strong views on abortion, anti-abortion views, and it dramatically shifted the composition of the court. Those justices, of course, were Justice Kavanaugh, Justice Gorsuch, and Justice Barrett. The Biden administration can do very little when it comes to expanding the right to abortion. Because it is now not a constitutional right, states are free to ban it, which means fine it, or even criminalize it. So states like Louisiana, for instance, are charging abortion, or planning to, as homicide. So. What can Congress do? Congress can certainly pass a federal law codifying Roe. That means pass federal legislation that makes abortion legal throughout all 50 states. Unfortunately, for pro-choice advocates, Democrats don't have enough votes to pass such legislation in the Senate. And the reason is you need 60 votes to overcome a filibuster, which means that Senate Republicans can prevent any bill, even though it passes the House, even though President Biden has agreed to sign it from passing the Senate. So I don't expect abortion to be legal as far as federal law is concerned, unless the composition of the Senate dramatically changes, either in the 2022 midterms or during the 2024 presidential election. So there's several ways that abortion can be a right. It can be a constitutional amendment where it's actually written into the Constitution. That's not a possibility because that requires a super majority of either Congress or states to pass a constitutional amendment. And we don't even have that 60 votes in the Senate, so we're not anywhere near there. The Supreme Court can, of course, read the constitutional right into the Constitution and the amendments that currently exist. That's what Roe v. Wade was. Now that that's been overturned, that's not an option. So the other possibility is legislation. It can be at the federal level, which we've talked about, or at the state level. But even if the federal government passes a law protecting abortion in all 50 states, that doesn't mean that a later Congress can change the law. The example I like to give is the assault weapons ban that happened during the Clinton administration. Well. Congress changed over time and it let that ban expire. So even though it was federal law for some period of time, it is no longer the law today. So in certain states, abortion will be legal. So for instance, in my home state of California, it's not only legal under California law, but it's actually written into the California constitution. So it's, each state can have its own constitution in addition to the federal government's constitutional rights. But in states where abortion is 
banned, it's illegal, either civilly or criminally. The only way for that to change is for the legislatures in those states to change. So, you know, it can be assembly members, it can be state senators, it can be the governor in that state. But unless the elected officials in those states change and they pass laws making abortion a right for all women in the state, it will continue to be unlawful in pro-life states. In states where abortion is illegal, women have few choices. They certainly can't get abortions in that state, and they can't have abortion pills mailed to them in that state. That would also be illegal. There's some question of whether abortions could be performed on federal or Native American land in pro-life states. I don't think that's gonna happen because nothing President Biden has said leads me to believe that abortions gonna, are gonna happen on federal land. Same thing with Native American tribes. They haven't really expressed, at least publicly, an interest in performing abortions on their land. So the best option for a woman who needs an abortion in a state where it's unlawful is to travel to a state where abortion is legal, if she can afford it. Some companies will pay for their employees to travel if necessary. Now, once they travel, because there is a constitutional right to travel between states, the woman will be able to get an abortion in a state that's a pro-choice state where it's legal. This is going to be the next big legal fight in this country because never in the history of the United States has the laws varied dramatically from one state to state. Of course, some states have the death penalty, some states don't. Some states, certain drugs are legal, in other states they're not, or even at the federal government level. But now you're gonna have some states where abortion is banned or even where abortion may be murder and other states where it's completely legal. So states where abortion is banned or outlawed are gonna try to prevent their citizens from going to other states to get abortions. So we're looking at two different issues. The first is civil liability, that's the lawsuits. So can a state or a citizen of a state where abortion is illegal sue someone out of state for helping one of the in-state citizens travel there to get an abortion. That's gonna be the next big legal fight. And the other is, can states criminalize the behavior, prosecute people from going out of state to get an abortion? I don't think that's gonna happen because in the Constitution, in the Privilege and Immunities Clause, there is that fundamental right to travel. So I don't think states are gonna be able to prevent their citizens from going out of state to doing so, to prosecute them criminally. It'll be interesting to see if they can do anything civilly. My prediction is that abortion will continue to be outlawed in the majority of states. Most of them have trigger laws on the books that said that if Roe v. Wade is overturned, that abortion is gonna be outlawed. And we're looking at most of them outlawing abortion from the moment of conception. And a lot of them aren't making any exceptions, whether it's to protect the health of the mother or for rape or incest. So you're gonna have outright bans in some cases, you're gonna have bans except to protect the life of the mother. But my expectation is that unless something dramatically changes either at the Senate level or with the composition of the Supreme Court, justices dying, retiring, or being impeached, the latter being the least likely, that abortion will remain unlawful in the majority of US states. Abortion has historically been an issue that favors Republicans. The conventional wisdom is that Republicans shouldn't go near it because it tends to be an issue that the majority of Americans support, the freedom to choose. But there recently has been this pro-life movement and it's really galvanized the right. So Republicans have made it a big issue. So it's going to be interesting to see if all these Democrats on social media who are either protesting or posting online are actually going to turn out in November when it's time to vote, especially in these swing states, these purple states, and if they're going to elect pro-choice legislatures. Well, if you look at the Dobbs opinion, it's really Justice Alito that's leading this charge. He's the one who, of course, famously wrote the opinion, but he has been a critic of these broad rights that have been read into the Constitution over the years. But it's not just Justice Alito, Justice Thomas's concurring opinion. 
he outright says that there's certain rights that the Supreme Court has read in the Constitution, such as interracial marriage, gay rights, that may not be constitutional rights and maybe should be limited to the states. So we'll see. I think that is more of a fringe opinion. I don't think the majority conservative block of the court favors going in that direction. Even Justice Alito said that the Dobbs opinion is limited to abortion only, but that same logic can certainly be used for other rights that aren't expressly written in the Constitution. We'll see what happens during the court's next term in 2023. I'm Nima Romani. Thanks for listening as always. If you like what you heard, make sure to like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications.